Hi, this is Dr. Murthy. Welcome to this first lecture in the online course on digital design using Verilog for absolute beginners. At the outset, let me be clear, these lectures are meant only for absolute beginners, not for experienced people. So, I may be using simple colloquial language or general words without losing the technology fragments. To start with, let us understand what is design. Design is an idea which is new that was not existing earlier. Design is not the fabrication or design is not connecting a circuit because many of the students think that design means connecting wires or making a circuit. In fact, it is an innovative or novel concept by which you get something better that was not existing earlier. For example, assume I have a mobile whose performance is very good but its power dissipation is high. So when people complain this to the vendor, what the vendor will do in the next division, that is in the next release, the company will come up with a new design so that it has a good performance as well as low power dissipation. Let us take another example. Assume that you are working with a two input NAND logic gate. After some time, you felt of having a three input NAND logic gate with even a better performance. When you ask for this, what the engineers will do? They will come up with new design features and finally fabricate a three input NAND gate which were not existing earlier. So the conclusion is design is a part of your fabrication, but it itself is not the fabrication. Okay. The fabrication is a very cumbersome process which involves many complex steps. The next question is where actually you use your Verilog in digital design process. Normally many students will have this doubt when they go for training, when they go for some course, they get a doubt. So what role you are going to play with your Verilog in the industry or in any company? So these are the normal doubts that a very beginner will have in his mind. To understand the role of your Verilog in the design, let's consider the chip design flow in a very simple manner. The process of chip design can be broadly divided into two levels. One is front-end, which is also called a logic design, and the other is back-end, physical design. Of course, these are the words that are normally used in the industry. Front-end design, back-end design, etc. The flow diagram changes slightly based on the type of designs that you use, like FPGS, ASICs, SOC designs, etc. Loosely speaking, front-end normally deals with specifications, architecture, functional behavior, verification, RTL, logic synthesis, etc. etc. It's a very general idea. The back-end deals with layout, place and route, verification, fabrication or implementation, packaging, so on. Of course, I will discuss all these details at some other time with some other video only to make you to understand the front-end design flow. I have shown you here a flow diagram. So the first one is your customer requirements. The next specifications. The next stage is functional or behavioral. Next stage is RTL design. That is your HDL code. Next is verification. Next is logic synthesis. Of course, the next stage is your backend which we have not considered here at present. The first step in design flow is the specifications. These specifications mostly depend on the customer requirements. In a very simple language, let me explain. For a practical situation, let us suppose that your company has got a project from some third party customer for the design of a HDMI chip. Then the customer will meet some members of the team from your company and explain them his requirements. That means what type of HDMI they want. 
what must be its size or area or speed to dis power dissipation so on so forth so many details they will give all the details to your team one of the team leader otherwise so based on the customer requirements the team will decide the specifications that is the first step in the flow that is once the specifications are finalized then the team has to decide the architecture of the chip with the desired functional behavior because they have to take care of so many things that will not uh, what we can say uh, give problem to the company so for this normally RTL model that is the resistor transfer level model is followed which is actually described by your hardware description language okay now you have come to the point that is you describe the functionality of your chip using the very low code which you have learnt during the training. Of course, you also use this very long to verify the functionality of the chip also. That's a secondary. So, I will try to make a video on RTL details and other verification process soon. Now, every one of you have got some idea where your very long is being used. In simple words, you can say that it is used in front-end design of a chip to describe the behavior of the chip. Of course, as of now, our explanation. Then what is this Verilog and how to understand or how to learn it? Basically, Verilog is a popular hardware description language. According to some versions, Verilog means verification logic. Some other people also say that Verilog means true logic because in some language, very means true, they say. Of course, we are not bothered, whatever it may be. Let's make some humble beginning to learn this wonderful hardware description language called Verilog. So to understand this Verilog, first we have to understand its structure. The most important part of Verilog structure is a module. Then the doubt arises. Then what is this module? So immediately let us go to the dictionary. Suppose you refer the dictionary. According to dic dictionary, it is a unit of architecture. In any architecture, it is a small unit or it is an independent part of the system. Only to make it to understand, I say. Similarly, in VHDL, other language, same is called entity. That's why your teacher normally in the classes, they say, when student asks, sir, when there is a code or program, how do we distinguish between whether it is a VHDL or very long? Some teachers say simply, if it starts with the entity, it is a VHDL. If it starts with the module, it is a very long. Of course, only just out of experience they say these things. That is, in very long, the module denotes an independent part of the digital system. What is this? For example, AND gate. For example, NAND gate. For example, half adder. SRAM. ALU. And so on and so forth. These are all denoted by modules. Suppose I want to design XR gate, then XR gate will be my module. That means I am going to describe its functionality with the help of my very large code. So the functionality or behavior of this module is described using very large code. Hence, it is important to know how this module is being described using the very large code. As it is very important in this first lecture, what I'll do is I'll explain this module with two or three examples, and I'll follow the next in the next lecture. I'll explain the other details. So let us see what is a module. As far as structure of the module is concerned, a very log module has two important parts. One is a declaration, and the other is body. In the declaration, what is the meaning of declaration? I declare the name of the module, I declare the inputs and outputs of the module. We enter the inputs and the outputs of the module. That means, suppose I have an AND gate. So, what is the input to the AND gate? What is the output of the AND gate, etc. So, the body, what is the next one? First is a declaration, the second is body. What is a body? The body gives the relationship between the inputs and the outputs. That is how the output is obtained from the input. 
the name of the module should start with an alphabetical letter and can include the special character underscore also. So the brevity we use this. So the declaration of the module starts with the predefined keyword module followed by the user selected name. The meaning of user selected name is the name that you have given to the module as I told you and gate, NAND gate, XR, SRAN, whatever it may be, that is user selected name. Not necessarily this name, you can give any other name also. But normally for a beginner what I suggest is you give those names, you can easily recall or recollect the actual functioning of that module by its name. By just looking or reading the name itself, anybody can understand, anybody should understand. Therefore, it is better to choose appropriate names. The names of the inputs and outputs, which are also called I.O. ports, the name of the module should start with an alphabetical letter, as I have already told you, and it should never start with a number normally. Now, another most important thing about Verilog is it is always case sensitive. What do you mean, mean by that? Suppose I write output y is equal to a logic and p, and also output capital Y is equal to capital A and logic B. These two statements are printed as separately by your very law because it is a case sensitive. Just for your information I say, whereas VHDL is case insensitive. When you write the same statements in VHDL, they treat them alike. So, of course, that is not the present point. Let us confine ourselves to very law. So, very law is a case sensitive. You must be careful. Now, let us to understand this module, let us take one example, a simple example like AND gate. So, when you look at this AND gate, you have two inputs and one output and output y is equal to a dot b, that is a and b. So, here module, the first one is keyword module followed by the name of the module, my underscore AND gate, not necessarily this, you can give any other name also, just my AND gate. Within the brackets, I told you these things we have to declare the ports that is y comma a comma b and also remember to the maximum extent these order y a b or b a y or a b y whatever you use it will not matter much except under some special cases for the beginners it is not necessary we can treat almost this order is independent that is we can give choose any order next what are these inputs input a comma b output y the semicolon is important at the end then this is about the first part is about declaration second one body so what is this body assign y is equal to a logical and p don't bother about assign other things will come up afterwards slowly but at present assign y what is the meaning of this that is the logic and of a and b is assigned to y in a very simple words, I say y is equal to a large and b and the body is over. The behavior what you are expecting from this and get you have described here and last end module. So this is a simple example for your module and get and this you can also say this is a simple very large code for your logic and gate. So the name of the module in the above code is a user selected, user defined. What is its name? My and gate. Similarly, let me take another example. Ah, let me explain further. In the code A, B, Y are the names of the inputs and outputs. The order of writing the input and output, of course, I have explained inside the parenthesis is irrelevant. One can also write the module statement as module my and gate Y A B for the semicolon is a line separator always, just like in other software languages, semicolon is always a line separator. Let me take another example. It is an XOR gate. As you know already XOR gate, the symbol A is an input, B is the other output. Of course, Y is equal to A complement dot B plus B complement dot A, you know the output. But we have some feature assigned state. Here we use the logical XR symbol. We'll see this because our interest is mainly to understand the module. First part module, this is your keyword my underscore XR gate. This is the name of the module. It also indirectly indicates.